Today we will be controlling external synthesizer hardware with FL Studio in the MIDI Out plugin. Next, we will show how you can use this to record external synths back into FL Studio. But for now, let's start by controlling it. The synthesizer I've chosen for this demonstration is the Moog Sub 37, which features both 5 pin DIN MIDI as well as MIDI over USB. Currently, I have the Sub 37 connected to my computer via USB. Now we need to make sure FL Studio is configured to talk to the synth. To do this, click Options and MIDI Settings. The section we are most interested in at the moment is the Output section, because we want FL Studio to be able to control the Sub 37. Here we see the available MIDI devices. By selecting the Moog, we can change some of its properties. First option is Send Master Sync. This is important if you want to synchronize things like the arpeggiator. Next, we have the port number. This is a reserved connection over which FL Studio and the synth can communicate. You can set this number to anything, so long as it's unique and does not conflict with other devices. I'll set it to port 3. We can also enable the synth in the input section if we plan to record MIDI notes or parameter changes from the synth. Once everything is set, we can close this window. Now let's open the plugin picker and add the MIDI out plugin. Once loaded, we can play some notes and see that we don't get any sound. This is because the MIDI out plugin is not set to the correct port or channel. I'll set the port to 3 to match the MIDI settings from earlier. Still no sound. This is because the Moog is set to communicate on channel 2. For each port, there are further 16 MIDI channels you can use, so the port and MIDI channel must match. If you aren't sure what channel your synth is set to, this can usually be located in the global options for the synth, or you can just step through the 16 channels until it plays. Now we have some sound. In the next section of the plugin, we have several pages of controls. To begin with, these controls are not active, but they can be set to control parameters on the synth by assigning control addresses. To do this, click on the gray gear icon to the right of the knob. Here we can assign the knob a name and controller address. User manuals are usually a good place to find out what addresses are assigned to each parameter of a synth. Once a parameter is set, just click Accept. To get us started, I've gone ahead and created a preset for the Moog Sub 37. On the first page, we have some filter controls. Page 2 has all the oscillator controls. Page 3 has controls for the Amps ADSR filter. Let's play some notes and make some changes using the MIDI Out plugin. Having access to these parameters from within FL Studio is great should you want to create some automation of sound and parameter changes in a project. Now that we have MIDI out working with an external synth, let's look at some ways we can record our work. To get us started, I've gone ahead and set up something for the Sub 37 to play. I plan to record on Mixer Insert 1, so this is where we will enable audio input. Before we can begin recording, we need to make sure our audio settings are set correctly. Open the audio settings from the options menu. Here we can see our device settings. To enable recording, be sure the device section is set to some form of ASIO. Normally, you would use your audio device's native ASIO driver, but if it does not have one, use FL Studio ASIO. ASIO for all can be useful if you need to enable multiple audio input devices. Now, when we return to the insert channel in the mixer, we can open the input dropdown and select the input where our external synth is connected. I'm using a Focusrite Scarlett 18i20 interface, so your options may look a little different I have the Sub 37 connected to inputs 1 and 2 of my interface, so I will select the stereo combination of inputs 1 and 2. Normally, the Sub 37 would be a mono input, but I have the audio running through the TC Electric, Alter Ego X4, and the Hall of Fame, so I will be recording stereo to capture the delay and reverb effects from these pedals. If you have a device, like a microphone, that is only connected to one of the inputs of your audio interface, then it is mono and you should select the mono input, otherwise your recorded audio will come out of only one speaker. Now let's check to see that we are getting sound. And we are! So we're now one step closer to being able to record. 
Next, we need to set up several iterations of our loop in the playlist. I'm simply dropping these in using the paint tool. This might be a few too many. I'll delete some once recording begins. Mixer Channel 1 has our synth sound as its input, so we need to arm this track for recording. To do this, click on the gray dot near the bottom of the channel, and notice it turns red and the channel is highlighted in purple. This means the track is armed for recording. Now I will set playback to song mode and click the record button. Here we get several options to select what type of information we want to record. If you choose the top option, it will automatically place an instance of the Edison plugin on our track and record the audio there. You would select notes and automation if you were planning to record MIDI information and parameter changes from a MIDI controller. And last, there is the option to record everything. You would select this if you plan to record external audio and MIDI from a performance simultaneously. We're going to select audio into the playlist. This will render our synth sound as an audio clip that we can work with in the playlist. As soon as you click this option, you will hear a one measure count off and then recording will begin. So let's do it. Sounds great. Now we can bring in a new pattern and begin to build a song entirely with sounds from the Sub 37. I think this pattern should play an octave lower so it doesn't conflict with our first pattern. Now, let's arm for recording and record the new pattern. These sound great and would be a good beginning to a song. Enjoy using hardware synths with your FL Studio projects. <laughs> 